Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. We are on this topic about forecasting and this section will focus on uh, understanding the averaging method uh, with trend. Right? So uh, when trend is considered uh, factored into our consideration for forecasting, then we have to uh, basically pick another different category of method that respects the rise of data as attaining new heights. In other words, there's no expectation of future data uh, having to go down in order to maintain some sort of uh, averaging level. So, so before we apply uh, this, this kind of methods for forecasting, our a priori attitude towards the data is that the data uh, attains new heights and stays there. What goes up stays there, or what goes down stays there, right? There is no expectation of the data uh, fluctuating back in the negative direction so as to maintain or upkeep a, an averaging value. So uh, with that in mind and with that um, um, assessment of the data's behavior in mind, then how do we implement it in formula? So in particular, um, the ES with trend method is one such method that respects the data uh, having uh, the attainment of new heights without the need for coming back down to average it back. So the idea is that the new forecast value will be made up of two components, the baseline estimate and the trend estimate. Now to understand the rationale behind this, uh, I'm going to try to uh, draw an analogy about why we might want to uh, believe this method. You, you, you see that I'm trying to avoid using the word uh, why this method is more accurate. Okay, so I'm just trying to say that this method seems to suggest a way of handling the data the, uh, uh, in a way that, that gives us some feel that it is reliable. <clears throat> so um, let's think about having a bullseye. Okay, so the board is here throwing darts, all right, and the bullseye is here. And I'm using X, which is the position of the actual data uh, in future. So uh, we are trying to throw that and you're standing here. All right, suppose the game of the, 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 the game's rule is that you have one dart. I give you one dart and you're supposed to throw the dart. If you hit bullseye, you get A plus for your course, right? But anywhere else, you get failure and you have one dart and it's pretty far away, like five meters, you know, so uh, what do you do there? Well, if the rule is you have one dart and knowing that there might be fluctuations and control and so on and so forth, uh, you might miss the bullseye. What you do is you practice hard, right? You keep throwing and practicing your, your control and your, your uh, exertion of energy so as to um, make it right. But what happens? Well, what happens is that you can throw and throw and uh, most of the time, right, it will be outside, it will be somewhere uh, around, except the bullseye. Yeah? And perhaps by chance, you actually end up being at the bullseye. But beforehand, you already know the chances, the odds are that you can't get it, right? So in other words, it's a very uh, uphill task, uh, even in terms of understanding the methodology gives us a bit of the creeps that it's just hard to get it right. Yeah. So if this is going to be the case, I'm going to hear a lot of complaints. No, that's not fair. It's just so, so hard. Nobody's going to get A plus and so on and so forth. Right. So, okay, I get you. I get you. So suppose now we twist the rule a little bit. We say you've got two darts, right? You've got two darts. Now, you probably wouldn't feel too happy about it still, even if you have twice the opportunities. Why? Because uh, if you throw two times, because the inherent nature is that it is, it is difficult to get it right in one shot. So given twice, you could feel better, but you don't get the sense that it's going to uh, uh, give you the, the stability enough for you to assure yourself that you will hit the bullseye. Uh, with pretty good chances. So in addition to giving you two darts, I'm, have, I'm going to change the rule a little bit, right? I'm going to say that the two darts will be used in such a fashion that you will first throw the first dart, 
okay wherever it lands you are going to walk there and then throw the remaining dot towards the bullseye okay now um upon hearing this i hope you will feel more rejoice because uh, we feel that we have much better control of this short distance in terms of throwing no matter how bad or how good you are right than a one shot or twice shot direct long distance kind of a dot throwing isn't it yeah so our if if i change the rule uh into this form that you walk to wherever is the landing position of the first dot and then throw the second dot to get the bullseye even if you haven't done it implicitly you feel more assured yes yeah you feel that well even if i'm not uh, trained uh in, in an expert fashion i believe yeah I, there's a chance right there's a chance that i can get it right yeah okay now imagine you explaining to your customer explaining to your boss that your prediction is better than your competitors because you're using this two-step method not because you're having two darts but you're having two darts uh, used in this manner do you think you can convince your customer your boss your shareholders your management that your forecast value you know the ability to get a bullseye is better than your competitors make sense yeah even though you haven't done it it sounds convincing right are we saying that we definitely can get the bullseye can get the answer we are better well we are not saying anything or any guarantee about definitely getting the bullseye we're not saying anything about definitely getting the exact right answer for the forecast value x what we are saying is our methodology gives us more sense of um, reliability right that we can control distances uh, <clears throat> or estimated values that are smaller in values than that are large in values okay so that is the main uh, thinking behind this method in some sense this part is the ballpark so we get the ballpark uh, amount right and then we have a fine tuning right so this is you can think of this as the baseline so let's uh, estimate our baseline roughly it's okay you know you don't have to be precise you can get it wrong in fact you can even overshoot and your adjustment your fine tuning can be negative also all right or the fine tuning so as to uh, offset it back to something that is that's deemed to be more reliable okay so with that idea behind uh, then in terms of formula we can implement it in terms of the addition of two estimates the ballpark figure all right the ballpark figure plus the fine tuning the trend estimate okay so the idea is this that when we add up these two we think that because these two estimates are kind of uh, separately obtained we think that it will give us more assurance that our forecast is right again notice that i quietly avoid the word more accurate right so we are not claiming that yes with trend is more accurate because if so then we might as well just learn this method and forget about the rest but that's not true first of all we understand that the data has a as a sort of a trend like fashion our own notion of trend that is is climbing up not expecting to come down and secondly we we implement that with this two step approach and this two step component can actually be uh, obtained differently but we're going to obtain it this way right uh, in terms of the formula we're going to do it this way uh, and while at first glance this may seem very complicated uh, let me sort of um, show you the, the the bone structure right so hopefully you can see uh, the components and uh, not get intimidated by it so notice that this and this they form two uh, applications of exponential smoothing that's right the plain old exponential smoothing 
Okay, the first one is the baseline, which is the new forecast value. Because our final forecast value is F, we're going to use a new uh, variable name. So let's just call it B for baseline. So our first uh, baseline, first ES exponential smoothing forecast value is going to be alpha XT, fine, plus 1 minus alpha, previous forecast, not the previous baseline, uh, previous forecast. So that's one application of ES with trend, uh, of ES itself. So that's easy to understand, right? We obtain the, the forecast, but tentatively call it baseline rather than the final forecast. And this part, right, uh, I'll explain the, the T, the trend, a bit. But the idea is, uh, what is trend? All right, what is trend? So to, to do that, I'm going to move back to my drawing screen and uh, try to add some data points here. Okay, so I'm going to add some data 